Howdy folks, Rudros here, and welcome to another Lorcana Wednesday with Set 5 Shimmering Skies, and our first deck we are talking about is Hyper Aggro, and boy oh boy, is uh, this deck making a lot of waves and making a lot of people n nervous and excited, I guess, depending on what side of the fence you're on. So the whole point of this deck is just slam out everything you can, go fast, and get to 20 lore as quickly as you possibly can. Now, what is new about this, right? We've had aggro around for a while, but there are some key cards we now have in here that are going to make a big, big difference. First one right here, which is Miss Daisy Duck. This card has a lot of people buzzing. If you look at the one and the two and the one, it's, it's just a Lilo, right? But the big thing is this four defense or toughness willpower in the corner which means it's going to take a lot more than the usual suspects to get rid of this card. On turn one, I don't think there's a single card in the game that can get rid of a Daisy Duck. Turn two, they could use two Fire the Cannons, or maybe if they've got like a guest down Reckless, that can hit for four. But for the most part, this is a lot more health than we're used to dealing with on these one-drops. Now, keep in mind, Daisy does have the downside of that when she quests. She's going to reveal the top card of their deck, and if it's a character, she puts it into their hand, and she can draw your opponents a lot of cards. However, because it's specifically characters, she will also filter to the bottom of the deck things like Be Prepared or Grab Your Sword, some of these big board wipe action songs that can usually threaten the deck. So the card is absolutely going to be a menace in these aggro matchups, and what's really interesting about this version of the list is you don't actually want to curve out in this list you do not want to do a one drop on one a two drop on two a three drop on three your ideal play if you notice how many one drops we have in here which is a grand total of 22 you want to go one drop on one two one drops on two maybe three on three the one and two turns are the most important but ideally you just want to spam one drops and overwhelm them with so many things so quickly that they just can't answer it. So Daisy is our only new card in the one drop sense. Now, I've seen some people bump this all the way up to 24 one drops. We're currently at 22. So you could do that. I've looked through the other one drops. There's nothing else that really helps from an aggro sense. We don't have songs to justify Golden Harp. Uh, you know, Pluto helps us cheat, but we're trying to get lore quickly. We're not trying to cheat in bigger cards. So if you look at all these other characters, there's nothing that's going to help you aggressively get lore. And that's what your goal is. So if you wanted to go up to 24, I think you can increase Chernabog and Broom to one apiece. However, these are not the cards I'm looking for. I am looking for the Daisy, the Lilo, and the Maleficent because I'm trying to get a lot of lore. And while these cards, the card draw can be nice, you want to get lore. So in your two drop space, again, you are trying to get lore. Piglet is very good. If you can't see the extra one drops on turn two, Piglet is a huge threat that if he, if you know, let's say you get Daisy turn one, Piglet turn two, and then protect it with a bodyguard Donald on turn three. That's a lot of lore, a lot of protection out of nowhere. And there's a lot of decks that just can't deal with it and requires them to see their cards correctly. Wendy, I've actually favored, you'll see in these matches, if I'm going against Steel in particular, I will favor Wendy over Piglet as the one extra health means they usually have to spend one more thing on it versus Piglet will die to a Storm Rage on, to an early strength of a Raging Fire, to a Baboom. And those cards are pretty common, so don't be afraid to favor Wendy at that point over Piglet. Piglet will absolutely have a big target on his back. And Snake is just a protection factor. Let's say you don't see the one-drop spam you want to, or maybe you do. You see Daisy and then Lilo Maleficent, and then on turn three, you can quest with them. Maleficent bounce one back and replay it so it's readied, and they can't challenge it, which is great. Donald is the only bodyguard we're running. He's pretty much a superior version of the old Simba card. He has the same stats. He is one more ink, which is a bit unfortunate, but he also gains gives one of your characters one lore, so he's going to give whatever one drop or piglet already on the field that extra one, and every bit of lore helps. That's absolutely what you want. Rounding off the high end, as you can see, our highest card is four. So you don't really need to go above four ink in this list. You can. You absolutely can, especially with a card I'm going to show you later. But you don't need to. The Merlin Mim package is just here to protect uh, cards, you know, one drops that you want to ready up. Also is good for bouncing goat late in the game to help you close out the game. And then Sven. Sven is a more recent edition. You're actually going to see some of these matches where I had the previous edition, which is Baloo here. We'll get to him in a moment. The reason I ultimately went with Sven over Baloo, he is inkable and Baloo is not. And this deck already does run a pretty high amount of uninkables at 16, so with Baloo is at 20. And Sven 
basically kind of works like Baloo in the sense that he is protecting a card, right? Baloo is a bodyguard. Sven ready is a character, so they can't be challenged. That's not going to prevent any actions, of course, but it's the same thing, right? Baloo is preventing them from being challenged because he has to be challenged first. Whereas Sven just says, well, you can't challenge it at all because I've ready them. Sven also has a decent body if for some reason you have to trade into the opponent. Three is nice and he quests for two, which is better than Baloo. Now, Baloo is nice. I don't think you're wrong. If you want to swap out the four Sven for the four Baloo, I think I don't think that's wrong. However, going against an under the sea deck and some other decks that were able to deal with Baloo without banishing him, his guaranteed two lore, which is why he was originally in here, it was being thwarted. You know, they would use Mother Knows Best to bounce it. They would use a few other just cards that circumvented him getting that instant lore, which is what he's in here for. If he's not getting that instant lore, then this card isn't really worth it. So I personally have liked the Sven better in testing, and there were a few times I was getting bricked uh, with 20 uninkables with the blue, but that one's your choice. Go to help you close out games. New cards, absolutely you need to be running for Gathering Knowledge and Wisdom. If you see all four of these, that is eight lore that's almost halfway to your victory just on its own which is really good and the key new card that is going to help make this deck work is the amethyst chromicon this even more than the daisy is the reason this deck is very strong now because the problem with aggro beforehand was you would dump your hand out put out all these one drops and it would either get you there or it wouldn't if they were able to answer your board and wipe it up with a tinkerbell grab your sword maybe even just a Robin Hood challenging you over and over again, whatever it was, you were just out of gas. Now you're top decking, probably putting a one drop into play that doesn't do a whole lot. The Amethyst Chromicon, for a cost of nothing, you just have to exert it, which can be done the turn it's played, lets each player draw a card. Yes, you're giving your opponent's cards in hand, but that doesn't matter. Unless they're specifically on Sapphire, they can still only use as much ink as they have. And you'll get to see in some of these matches how much card draw this can give you, and it means you don't run out of gas. They are now still forced to find their removal turn after turn after turn after turn. To keep answering threats, you run out turn after turn after turn. And let's say you get to 13, 14 with all your one drops and they're able to stabilize your board. Now you're just digging for goat and knowledge at this point. Because, okay, that's great. Knowledge, knowledge, I win. Goat, 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 I can win. So this card is absolutely essential. I would highly look for this in your opening mulligan if you can, along with some one drops. Because the games, I see this, even just one of it versus seeing none of them is night and day. Because there are some games I've tested where you don't see this card and it's just like old aggro. You run out of gas, they answer your hand, and it's actually even worse because your daisy has now given them a bunch more cards in hand. So now they have even more tools to deal with you than they would normally. So Chromicon is absolutely the key. Finally, this spot could be flexed or cut. It's the library. I have liked it in testing. It does feel bad if your board gets wiped and then you just top deck library. Eh, it doesn't feel very good. It's one cheaper than the castle, though, and we are trying to keep a lower curve. Uh, and it has a lot of health, so it's a little more difficult to take out than castle. Plus, it is nice as, for some of the follow-up turns as a way to keep giving you card draw that you can move all your one drops there. And they're going to be banishing those characters because they have to, and then you're getting a card draw off of it. I like it. I think it works well on this. It's not. You do not have to run this by any means. If you would rather run, you know, two more of the characters, that's fine. If there's another two or three drop you feel you'd put in here, a Simba or maybe the Baloo, you can do that. I don't think the library is essential. However, I have had a few times where, okay, they've got the big board wipe to grab your sword, but it doesn't hit the library, so then they still have to deal with the library. So I do think a location can put on a little pressure there as well. So that's the deck. It's very simple, very straightforward. Go fast, go quick, make your opponents miserable, and go home early and get yourself a nice coffee. Let's see how it performs. First time using the new tabletop simulator setup. This is certainly no pixel born, but we're going to do the best that we can. So in this hand, I opt to just keep the Lilo. I could have kept the Broom and the Pascal as extra evasives, um, but I really wanted Lilo and I wanted to try to find a Chromicon or something that could increase my draw potential, which I absolutely did. So uh, I think our opponent might be going first here. I don't remember how this got resolved. Okay, so we get to go first. We ink Pascal. Go ahead and just put out Lilo, and we don't have the Daisy. So on turn two, I could go into my draw. I now have Piglet, which is pretty good. I could set up for the Piglet into the Donald, which I probably will do. Very straightforward play. 
See what our opponent's on. Our opponent missed their one drop, which is huge for us. They do put out a Sir Hiss, which can answer any of our cards, but also will die to them. I now have the Baloo as well. So this, this as you'll see, this is back when I still had Baloo in, and, uh, so you will see a few of those in here. But here's that play I was talking about. The one drop turn one into the Piglet. We're already on eight lore. It's turn three, and we're at eight lore already. So our opponent is absolutely forced to... Uh, they really need to start putting out some pressure. Here's an Aerial. Uh, grab your sword would be very good for them if they can find it. Of course, they can't do that because they're not playing steel. They're playing the under the sea. Under the sea is also still very strong. However, with Hiss being a two and Ariel being a singer five, they're one short for the grab your sword. And they're pretty much forced to go in just to slow me down. And at this point, I can ink the broom. Feeling pretty decent on my lore. I go or on my inkwell. And already up to 13. And if they kill this blue, <laughs> they uh, I'm going to get another two lore. So this is a match for an example. I think this is how they deal with the blue. And this is why I left this in here for the video. So you could see kind of why I end up swapping the blue out. Yep. They use the bounce to just bounce them back to hand. Take out the piglet. So blue is fine. You you can go with him if you want. Here's a Chromicon. Draw. Put out another Chromicon. Draw. We both draw. Yes, my opponent has a ton of cards in hand. But... It doesn't matter for them. They can still only play as much ink as that. He's going to have five ink next turn. So he can do the ink and whatever he can sing with the aerial. That's it. Whereas me, you know, aggro normally runs out of gas. And right now I'm threatening lethal. You know, they don't know that I have the knowledge and wisdom in hand. But So they trade with the Lilo. Any instant lore gain, they bounce them left and Just doing everything they can to slow us down. Cool. I'll just go ahead and draw two cards. Don't mind if I do. Put out the daisy. Put out another blue. Actually, no reason to exert it for bodyguard and put out a Maleficent. Again, I'm just jamming out threats, and I'm going to be drawing an extra two cards every turn saying, you know, you, they will run out of answers eventually. I mean, he can only, ca e even if he was in steel, he can only cast four grab your sword, and that doesn't even answer the blue. He can't under the sea yet, which is his biggest answer. Can bounce that. And yeah, this is just lethal because we have quest. Go to 18. Knowledge and wisdom. Boom. That's the game. That's that's the entire game. It's that quick. Our opponent was trying to hold us back, but uh, no dice. All right. Game two, as we were setting up, I wanted to make a comment on that under the sea deck, too, that when we didn't see the Chromicon and we couldn't keep pressure, that under the sea deck actually did give us a lot of issues. I really like this hand, so I mulliganed away a single knowledge and wisdom just to get it right back. There's Daisy on turn one, and the plan is to just... Go wide. It says Diablo, let's see what's coming. All right. You're more than welcome to see what's coming. So we're going to do Pascal and Maleficent most likely on turn two. I could go into the Wendy now that I've drawn it. I do decide to go into the Wendy. I think I had knowledge that this was a steel deck. And so be and because of that, that is why I favored the Wendy. Is like, well, I don't want the Maleficent to just get pinged off by something. This deck can shift into Diablo and then sing Storm Rage on on turn two. So he absolutely, yep, there's a Storm Rage on right there. So it's not going to kill the Wendy, which is why I opted to put the Wendy out. He is going to sing it anyway, and there you go. So see, and this is huge. Normally a Lilo would die to this, but Daisy doesn't die to it. Wendy doesn't die to it. I draw. Now he has Diablo. He gets to draw two off of that, which normally would be terrible. Like, oh my gosh, you're giving your opponent so many cards, but it doesn't matter when you're going this fast. It doesn't matter if he has 10, 14 cards in hand. He has three ink, so he can still only spend three ink. Puts out a Prince John's Mirror, which says I can't have more than three cards at the end of my turn, but I'm like, that's okay. I'm aggro. I plan to just spam all this out anyway. Does another Storm Rage on a Maleficent. That's good for, good for you. All right, here we go. Here's a library. We're going to go ahead and looks like Ink the Broom. I could put out more Chromicons, which looks like <laughs> I'm definitely deciding to do. Yep. So I use one of them, draw. I just go ahead and cast the Knowledge and Wisdom right now. Quest, I'm up to 12. You know, I'm on 4 ink and I'm at 12 lore already. He can send this Diablo into the Daisy, but it's still not going to kill the Wendy. And I've I've met the Prince John's Mirror. Yeah, our opponent has so many cards in hand that, that Diablo has gotten so much value. At this point, they have to go wide. The opponent just has to put out as many 1 and 2 drops as they can because they have to slow us down. Like, we are not going to run out of gas like we would in previous games. So here, quest with the Wendy, and I go for the Sven to ready it, and here's why I, I do really like the Sven, because now, okay, you have to spend removal on this. You cannot just challenge into this card. And use another card draw. Here, you are okay to go above four ink, because the Chromicons are feeding you so much value, you don't mind. 
I discard the piglet and to turn for the Prince John. And I have, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 18, plus the knowledge and wisdom in hand. I'm on lethal right now, and he can't challenge anything, so... <laughs> Can you can you stop me? So quest for three. Look at all those cards in hand from the Diablo. Okay. In any other deck, you'd be like, oh my goodness, I cannot believe I've given them all these cards. But when you're aggro... Now, Pete is quite nice here, as it does prevent us from playing actions to the start of the next turn. So he does shut off the knowledge and wisdom. He's probably thinking, like, all right, as long as I draw a Pete every turn for the rest of the game, we're golden. Storm Ray John is not enough to kill... Sven or the Wendy, and we draw the goat, so we go to 18. We can't knowledge and wisdom this turn, but goat puts us at 19, which also just says no matter what you do on your turn, goat's gonna win, and that's it. And I just draw some cards for fun. Yeah, I mean, it's over at that point. Opponent just concedes. I just draw out just to show how fun. Look at their hand. Look how many cards they have in their hand. Yeah, it, that's a game. It's oh, so over. All right, here we have our third game. And obviously, going first is much preferred, but. Going second, you can absolutely pull this off going second. As a matter of fact, for opposing decks, they pretty much need you to go second to have a chance at this. Like, if you're going first, man, it's so hard to beat. But we're going second in this one. So I have several daisies. I go ahead and ink the piglet. And I know right there, I have no intention of putting the piglet out because I have so many one drops. So I'm okay inking the piglet, whereas the Donald and the Sven might come in handy later. He says, all right, let me see what you have. I was like, all right, well, I have a hundred one drops, so... Let's see what you can do. Now it's time to lose a Sven. Now let's put him out. I go ahead and put out both Daisy Ducks. <laughs> telling him, all right, well, what are you going to do here? Now, this is a good example of how this deck can struggle. Because my opponent has absolutely what he needs on turn three. Now, grab your sword wouldn't have been too bad as it would have done two damage. But with the Ursula, the one plus the three from the Robin Hood... He can take out the daisy, so I'm going to keep trying to put one drop pressure on. There's Lilo, there's Lilo, there's Daisy. Grab your sword will feel really bad off of this if he has it with the uh, Robin Hood, but I just said, eh, let's just see if you have it. Daisy is drawing our opponent cards, but I'm threatening, what, two, four, six, eight, ten lore? I'm threatening to go to 16. Diablo, I say, yep, I have Maleficent. As so our opponent storm rage on, that gets rid of one of the Lilos. And they can combine to take out another Daisy. That's so good for them. And keeps them with lore. Robin Hood is a really good punish to this deck. Not only for what he can sing, but because he is keeping himself up with lore. So they won't have to do this big lore quest at the end of the game. Now I'm at 12, but look at my hand now. So this is what normally happens with this type of aggro. Without the Chromicon or the library or some way to refill our hand... I'm out of gas. I'm completely out of gas. If he does grab your sword here, or even just... He doesn't even need to grab your sword. He can keep picking... Yeah, look at that. Diablo can pick off Lilo. Ursula, Robin Hood can pick off another Daisy. And I'm going to run out of tempo here. I think he casts Hypnotic Deduction. Yeah. Check on that one. Tabletop's a bit of a finicky program, so we have to do some uh, middling. <laughs> there are times it doesn't work properly, and you're trying to put back cards that aren't supposed to be put back another storm rage on there goes maleficent she didn't get any value and then another daisy gone and he's actually you know not that he's keeping pace with lore but it's not like he's still on zero normally in lorcana you have this chase where it's zero to 12 yeah it's seven to 12 that's a lot easier to overcome donald uh very timely top deck which lets us pretty safely go up to 17 with the donald lore so we're right there we're, we're pushing the donald is very good our opponent will definitely need some... Now, the Robin Hood can still clear out the Donald. And then he can clear out the... With the Maleficent, he can clear out the Diablo. And he'll need some little more from the Daisy. So we are pushing here. The Donald was a very fortunate top deck. If that had been a goat, that would have felt quite bad. One of the Mims probably would have been okay, too. Donald was probably the best thing we could have asked for there. And it's at this point, I'm just thinking, man, if I could just get a knowledge and wisdom off the top, you know, something. But but he, I don't have the Chromacons for backup. So our opponent goes wide, plays Strength of a Raging Fire. That's four. Knocks out the Daisy immediately. Robin Hood finishes off the Donald. And Diablo, yeah, has to kill himself. But now my board is empty. He's got a lot. And he's almost halfway to his lore total, too. He's already on nine. And unfortunately, I top deck library, which... He can absolutely answer. And he's kind of nice. The only nice thing is he's kind of forced to answer this. Because, again, if I top deck knowledge and wisdom, 
I'll just win on the spot. But with no resources, our opponent can just go as wide as they want. They know there's no board clear or anything to worry about that. He actually risks it. He says, go ahead. You can get it. And, uh, had I top deck knowledge and wisdom, I would have got it. But I did top deck another library and our opponent's on lethal. So that is that game. But that just shows you going second, you know, quite a bit harder. And without the card draw to keep the gas going, you can still falter. Even with three, four daisies on the field. I saw all four daisies, but it didn't matter. All right, one more game for you, and learning my lesson from that last game, knowing, okay, I need to find some card draw. Day Daisy is good. She'll get you some lore, but she's she is not the impregnable wall that no one can get past. She can be dealt with, and she is giving your opponent gas while she's doing it. So start with the Daisy. No card draw on this one, unfortunately, but we at least have the one-drop spam. We also have Snake, which is kind of some semi-protection, and our opponent misses our one-drop, which is huge. So I let go of one of the Wendy's. I think we actually made the miss on the draw there. Yeah, they revealed Sudden Chill. So Sudden Chill got put to the bottom, so Daisy didn't actually draw them anything. Threatening to go all the way up to eight. And Ursula, but we don't have any songs, so it's really just to get a body. Ursula at least can take out the Maleficent and the Lilo. And there's that Chromicon. So I've got a couple options here. I can go into the Chromicon. I don't quite need it yet. It's a little better once my hand is empty. Boop, pull back the Maleficent. I'd rather do that. Protect the Maleficent from the Ursula. Maleficent and Lilo are the exact same. I can do Sven next turn too, or I can go into the Chromicon if I need some card draw. He sets up for an Ursula Singer, but look how slow that is. Unless he's got a huge song, I'm still threatening to go so much. So we ink that. Quest for Daisy. He does get a Robin Hood, but he doesn't have the shift target for it. I actually trade one of the few times I'll challenge in this deck just because I know that Ursula can take out the Maleficent. Do put out the Chromicon, opt to put out the followers, and pass. And now with a single Chromicon, I'm going to keep my hand flowing. I will at least be able to keep generating and putting out threats. Opponent just has to go wide. They didn't have a good song for Ursula. They told me after the game, like, yeah, I was hoping to draw into some great song with Ursula. I could double sing, help clean up the board, but they just didn't draw into it. Strength of a Raging Fire probably would have been their best bet. And we just go, okay, well, time for me to quest out. Here, I actually do favor the break with the, because I, at this point, I just need a card that instantly gets me lower, which is a goat, and says, yeah, okay, game's over, because no matter what you do on your next turn, the goat will automatically get me, get me a win. So there you go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, go fast. That's the list. If you want to have a successful pretty straightforward way to do well this set for right now you can't go wrong with this aggro and we'll have to see if people can come up with consistent ways to beat it because it feels very very strong currently let me know what you think of watching the tabletop simulator matches too i might do some more deck techs in the future without recording the matches as much as i love showing that to you all it takes a lot more extra time and it's so much clunkier than pixelborn and i have to find people to play with so i might just do some actual deck techs and just talk about them let me know what you think of that in the comments below let me know what you think of aggro stay tuned for more Lorcana videos every wednesday and hopefully a lot more than that in the near future don't forget to like and subscribe it really helps the channel out and until next time take care